Just before the gunshot, we heard a voice yelling out, Give me the gun! The bloke would, uh, the bloke would have owned the place, was holding a gun, so he would have just fired instead of yelling at the girl. Okay. So I guess, I guess, I guess Gina was like, Put the fucking gun down, you suicidal maniac. Gina and Winnie Banks had the gun in his hands. Oh yeah, I bet that was a sight, huh? Them two waving their guns at each other? Must have been pretty heated. I mean, just before shouting out, we heard the geezer say, If you don't want to get shot... Uh, didn't recall, uh, didn't really sound like, uh, sound like he meant it, in mind. More of an empty threat. I highly doubt that. Mr. Winniebank was known to keep a revolver at his shop counter at all times. People say, people say that to protect the articles of his keeping, he readily pull a bullet in someone's head if required. No, no. That someone being himself, of course. Okay, there we go. Because that man would pull a gun on himself. <laughs> Good grief. Extraordinary devotion. Indeed. If alarming, misguided. Wait, I'm sorry. Did I even fucking read that right? I don't even think I did. Well, he certainly sounded like he was ready to pull the trigger the other night. Only the person was going to shoot... Uh, the person going to... Wow. <clears throat> Only the person he was going to shoot beat him to it. Cooked his goose proper. I love cooking duck. Cooking duck is fun, and cooking duck is delicious. Duck is delicious. It is delicious. You should eat duck. It's very fatty, though. Bet he would. Uh, bet he wish he squeezed the trigger instead of wasting time shooting, uh, shouting, giving the gun. And it was directly those words that you heard that night. It was more or less the same thing, Gov. Give me the gun. Arrgh! Kind of like that. Yes. Uh, a career in acting, very tragically missed. Then we heard the sound of someone hitting the deck. Before everything went dead quiet. After that, we we done a slam we done a slap dash job tidying the place up. Okay. Just before the gunshot, we heard a voice yelling, "Give me the gun." Hold it! So. so, in fact, you heard the voice and the gunshot almost simultaneously. We did, Gov. We did. Although, I suppose, if being honest, we heard a kind of wa wavering voice before the yelling and all. If you don't want to get shot... Give me the gun! Kind of like that. And where were the voices coming from? Could you tell? Of course we could. From the other side of the door, behind the counter it was. From the storeroom, where the victim was found dead. And the voice you heard, it was that of the victim, Mr. Windybank. On me Grammy's life. <laughs> On me Granny's life. Of course it was. On his Granny's life. Of course it was. <laughs> So, that would mean that you both knew Mr. Windybank and the sound of his voice. Uh, so, that means, what? Jesus Christ, you looked up the picture, it's like 500 pages for the first half of that chapter. Yikes. Don't you have to, well, I don't think you have to, but don't you, shouldn't you, uh, play the other fate stuff before getting into grand order i mean i'm a crazy son of a bitch right for the most part i don't like starting things in the middle i like starting from the beginning right even if they don't connect uh yeah but dragon age origin also had a massive word count it was like 74k oh god 74 my bad uh 740k jesus Wait, so 500 pages was Mass Effect? Or was it, uh... Or was it, um... Was it GFO? What, uh, what Nash what? <laughs> Any ideas? Yes, Council. Indeed, it would. No, 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 no. We didn't know that, Giza. That guy's a proper... 
Uh, 500 pages for FGL. Okay. Alright, damn. That's a lot. That's a lot. Is that more than a fucking Harry Potter book? I remember the first Harry Potter book I was given was fucking Goblet of Fire. Probably the most important one, <laughs> right? And I was given that as like a kid. They were like, here you go, you fucking, uh, I don't know. I don't know how old I was at the time. Like maybe 10 or some bullshit? I don't know. But they're like, here you go. This big ass book, Merry Christmas. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Harry Potter's like 1.2 million words total. For Goblet of Fire? No way. Goblet of Fire is like maybe 400 something pages? Maybe? Maybe that's exaggerated. Maybe 300 or something like that? I don't think it's 500 pages, right? I know Goblet of Fire is a big fucking book, though. <laughs> a big book of just someone. A big book of someone just yelling about how they don't like. How they don't like society. Isn't that right? <laughs> Go back and read the Harry Potter books. You're like, man, there's some, uh, there's some really, uh, racy stuff in here. <laughs> I mean, the whole series? Oh, yeah, well, definitely. I mean, if you're gonna, if you're gonna talk about the whole series and stuff, fucking, there's a bunch of series that you can just throw that in, right? Like, let's talk about all the, fu I mean, let's talk about fucking Marvel and DC and fucking Star Wars, all the things that aren't canon no more and all this other bullshit, right? Dumb, stupid shit. <laughs> Do you want to know about the droid that can use the force? Oh man, how am I supposed to? Uh, how am I supposed to die when the bloke and uh, when the bloke and all that fancy clobbering gave us an evil eye? If you value your lives, you will you will ensure your testimony is accurate and true. Oh, how many granny's life it is. Oh, on his granny's life it must be. It's a good it's a good job his granny's dead. Jesus. To summarize then, I immediately um uh, summarize then immediately after hearing the voice of the victim, you then heard the gunshot. Causing you to stumble and upset the items on the counter, scattering them all over the shop floor. Yeah, it sounds like we were clumsy. Don't forget we tidied up after that good, after like good little boys. Anyways. Okay. Just fire instead of yelling at the girl. Hmm. Okay, well. Been sitting on his testimony for a bit now, to be honest. Uh, the bloke was holding his gun, so he would have he would have just fired instead of yelling at the girl. So... That's a contradiction, because they said they didn't have time to look into the storeroom, but how the fuck would they know that he had a gun if even we didn't know that he had a gun because of the fucking picture, man? How you know that? Objection. How do you know that? You're saying that on the night in question, the victim, Mr. Winnie Banks, was wielding a gun, is that correct? That's right, Gov. I'm talking about he was the cat with the gat. <laughs> you got that picture? Yeah. Hey Nash. Uh hey, uh hey Nash, he has no question. And yet the photographic evidence from the time of the incident clearly shows that Mr. Wendy Banks was not in possession of a firearm of any description. Objection. Objection. What do you want? You surprised me. Did the defense really intend to highlight evidence that compromises the position of the accused even more? Listen, Von Zags, you don't know how I'm working, okay? I got, I got, I'm playing, I'm playing, see, you're playing 3D chess? I'm playing 4D chess, my guy. Not even 4D. I'm on 60. Furthermore, the defendants has failed to establish that the photographic prints present, uh, presented was taken a suitably short time prior to the victim's death. Your chronological... <clears throat> Your chronological uh, fuck. Your chronol uh, your I can't even say the fucking word. Your chronol your mm, chronology. Thank you. Is severely lacking, counsel. Yeah, that's right. Also, not surprised that the game with the most words is an Edo game. Fucking rants. I've never played rants actually. I heard 
people say i heard people go they went to rants for the naughty bits right but they stayed for the story apparently i've never played rants uh too right nash too right the old geezer would have been about to turn the tables on the girl eh? hardly likely no i'm afraid this won't stand as conclusive evidence uh. continue with the cross-examination counsel and heed my earlier warnings witness Hmm. Sulkin never sulks. Okay, so I didn't I didn't get a penalty for that. That's surprising. Hmm. Rance has twice the words of Clonad. Dude, I haven't even fu see for some reason a lot of people said Clonad was sad, right? And maybe I just didn't make it far enough because I stopped the playthrough, like I stopped the playthrough after uh I, I still have the the stream archived of me playing it, right? Uh, and that was like maybe two years ago or something like that. But I still have like the stream of it. And all I remember, all I remember is that your character is sad because his dad's an asshole or something. But he barely talks to his dad. And then your friend lives by himself, I guess. Or like in a dorm or some bullshit. And then there's a girl who doesn't have friends. And then there's a girl who eats paper. <laughs> right? And that's all I remember. I remember... Oh yeah, and there's another girl who gets really sad when you take away her scissors. <laughs> And she's like, I want the scissors, give it back to me. And I'm like, no, you're not, no, what are you doing? These are mine now. <laughs> and the other girl's just sitting in the corner eating a fucking book. I don't know what the hell that game's about. But maybe, maybe it gets sad later, you know? People say things are sad and then you're like, what was sad about this? It seems pretty normal to me. All right, let's see, was holding a gun. Hmm. Stuck everything back where we found it. Skip it straight to the back. Okay. Get our shot. Shot him. See, we never had a chance. What was the first statement you said? Just before a gunshot, we heard some bullshit. Although we did knock a few things over, but we weren't rifling through nothing. I guess I'll press that, you know? If that's the case, then why didn't you testify to the effect in the first place? Well, you know, we ain't exactly squeaky clean, are we? We ain't Nash, we ain't. If we admitted something like that, people would've think we was up to no good. Well said, Ringo, mi uh, old, wait, me old, chi me old China? What? <laughs> we only, we only land ourselves in even more trouble. And in fact, now, as a result of lying in your previous testimonies, that's exactly what you've done, landing yourself in even more trouble. Ah, uh, well, um, hmm, see about that. That's rotten luck, says the rotten apple eater. Witnesses, explain your actions to the court. Why did you ransack the victim's counter? We never ransacked nothing. Right, Nash, right? More like we tidied up a place. Uh, sorry. Okay. And then the only other one that I didn't... Is that? Hmm. Stuck everything back where we found it, escape her straight to the blind. Hold it! Okay. Yes, whereupon you fired a gun of your own at Mr. Herlock Shlums. Oh, yeah, there was that. He was, uh... Truth to be told, I was already shaking like a leaf. When he turned up. Okay, so I did, yeah, okay. I felt like I read this one, but I forgot. I think this was the first one that I pressed on. Okay. <clears throat> and they talk about that. All right. Oops, shit. I didn't mean to do that, shit. This full extent of their testimony. What is it, Runo? You look very fierce. I could pour you some herbal tea if you're tired. Oh, thank you, but I'm fine. Being such a logical thinker, you'll probably laugh. But I feel as though these brothers are still hiding something, something important. It's not more than a feeling, though. I have no proof of the sort. Hmm. Well? Feelings... Oh, man. It just came to my mind again. 
real quick side note, another visual novel I played, mainly because I had to, uh, not because I had to, but because, you know, I had to for the story to get everything, uh, Data Live. <laughs> Play Data Live. Um, well, feelings can be very logical at times. Sorry. People's expressions, the movement of their eyes, the words they choose. You can take them all in your brain, uh, brain, well, you can take all that in your brain, we'll quickly analyze, quickly, quietly, analyze it to come up with a feeling like you described. <laughs> uh, Kurumi, my love. Which one is, it's been a while, right? I had to stop because, I stopped because, um, I caught up with the anime, right? Well, not with the end, not now, but at the time I caught up with the anime. The way you did it was season one, first game, season two, second game, season three, third game, right? And then I finished season three, and then I didn't play the third game yet because in order to get the final ending of the of each game, you have to do all the routes. And since each fucking season adds a new girl to the mix, that means you got more routes to fucking do in the next game. So I had to, I had to put down, you know, the game, but I'm on, uh, I'm on, uh, the third game, right? And then I think season four just came out, and I think that's the last season that they're doing, right? I also have the, uh, light novels, too, so. Uh, Time Power Yonder. Oh, yeah, her. Fuck. With her Winchester guns or whatever the fuck she got. Yeah, she's cool. I don't know if I have a favorite yet, honestly. I honestly don't know if I have a favorite yet. All I know is that the first game, they, uh, they chickened out on some things, right? <laughs> they chickened out on some things. Like, the first game, um, they're like, well, you can't date- They're like, they're like, Yoshi knows a route, but you can't date her because, you know, right? Uh, cause, uh, cause, you know, her stature. And then the other one, uh, the- Fuck. Uh, the redhead or whatever. They're like, they're like, her route is kind of more like- you guys just like each other, right? You don't actually date because they they fucking wussed out, right? But then the second game's like, nah, man, fuck it, you're just dating them. <laughs> it's like, it's like, yeah, no, the ending is just you just date them, yeah. There's a lot of good ones in that fucking show. <laughs> There's a lot of good ones. Um, you concluded that there's something suspicious about the testimony without knowing why. That's all. I think you should trust your instincts. Iris, thank you. Sometimes, I think she's ten years old. I must be five. Data Live is a great waifu show. The thing I really like about Data Live is that they start out and there's like this one character that's like, that's like, here's my tragic backstory, and then everyone goes, ha ha ha, that's funny. And then you get to the third season, they said, okay, but let's stop with the waifu shit for a hot second and just talk about the art. Let's let's talk about this tragic backstory because we kind of been poking fun at it for a while now. <laughs> And then the entirety of season three, besides like one episode, which is the last episode, is just like, all right, let's get serious. <laughs> and I remember just sitting there watching. I'm like, are you telling me this happened because of this? And then as I'm saying that, it's happening. And I'm like, oh, oh, no. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no. All right, let's see. Uh, I wanted to press the last sentence, and I didn't do that. And why would we believe that? Huh? What? Well, because it's true, isn't it? The place was totally empty when we went in. At the time, the victim was already in the storeroom. Having been forced to open the door by the accused, who had a gun in his hand. In other words, on the night in question, these two witnesses never even laid eyes on the proprietor of the pawnbrokery, Mr. Wendy Ray. Correct? All right, you got it, mister. Down to the T. Hmm. So, the Sulkin brothers never actually encounter Mr. Windybags. Is that really true, I wonder? That's it. If it looks like, okay, well, now I can skip this. So, I guess I'm double-pressing, right? Because now I got that information, and I'm going to go back to the other statement and press that, and then he's going to be like, but you said you never saw him. Which is what I was trying to prove to begin- I think that's why they didn't give me a penalty. 
because I showed them the photo and they're like, you're on the right track, but we're not gonna penalize you because this isn't the correct answer. Mario and Luigi and my funny lawyer game. <laughs> what? You know, you know what? Recently, there was the news about the guy, or girl, I don't know, a person who invested in, what, 40k to ask a question about F-Zero for Nintendo. And they're like, it's really hard to make games and to make remakes and new games of things that people ask for. And it's like, really, Nintendo? Is it really? Because, I mean, you make like five Mario games a fucking year, and I'm pretty sure you can let Mario rest for like, a good two years. Meanwhile, you guys constantly fuck up Paper Mario, and when's the last time we get a fucking Mario and Luigi RPG? Like, come on, guys. Don't bullshit me on that. <laughs> what are you talking about? And whenever you make Star Fox, you just go, hey, guys, remember Star Fox 64? That was kind of good. Let's do it again. <laughs> what? It's really hard, especially when we don't do anything new. Uh, let's see. Oh shit. Damn it, why'd I do that? I wasn't paying attention. Fuck, I'm sorry. It's where the day Mario VA passes Nintendo stock is gonna be fucking tanked. I don't know, man. You're telling me people wouldn't want a visual novel of, uh, like hanging out with Daisy and Peach and Rosalina? Right? You know? And then, Bow and then Bowser's in the corner. He's like, yo, I got this crown, and if you unlock the secret route. <laughs> <laughs> something might happen. I'm not gonna say what's gonna happen, but something might happen, right? Alright, I'm gonna double press this one. Seeing that Misty, Mr. Wendy Banks had a gun in his hand. Yeah. Okay. Shouldn't this be, like, interrupted? Because they said that they never saw him? So, uh, that's someone being himself, of course. Let's see. Where she squeezed the trigger. More or less the same thing, Gov. Give me the gun. Bang. Kind of like that. Let's see. <laughs> Mario Eroge with Bowser and Tiara. Oh, no, I didn't mean like that. I met Bowsette, man. Bowser already had his NTR moment. That was Mario Sunshine, dude. <laughs> when he's like, when he's like fucking, when, when Bowser Jr. shows up and he's like, yeah, that's my mama. And then Peach goes, I'm your mom? <laughs> it's like, why do you got to think about that? Shouldn't the answer be no, I'm not your mom? She goes, wait a minute, I'm your mom? <laughs> like, why are you thinking about it? Uh, just before gunshot, we heard voices yelling, give me the gun. Okay. Hmm, so then I, I must have some evidence then. Right? Photograph automatically taken. Um, let me actually take a look at this. 330. Okay, this is when they supposedly tidied up and they were on their way out. This didn't help me at all. Let me see the gun. I don't think the gun will give me anything, really. Wendy Banks gun. This Mr. Wendy Banks gun. Cylinder is completely empty. Mr. Wendy Banks always kept the gun, uh, kept the gun on hand. Did he ever have a bullet in the gun, though? Yes. Only ever with a single bullet loaded, I understand. That's right. Okay. His one bullet was fired that night. Poor man lost his life. He was protecting the shop, I wonder. Hmm. Okay. Wait a minute! I just realized something, right? How many times did they shoot the gun? Did they shoot the gun once? Because if they shot the gun once, and that bullet went into Shlom's, then that means the gun sh means the gun shot from fucking what you call it? This bullet in the goddamn wall, wherever the hell it is. Where where is my? It means that this bullet belongs to something else, 
<laughs> right? I think they only shot once. I'm not sure if they shot twice. Let's see. And let me check this. Uh, pawnbroker ticket coat. Okay, his blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see. I didn't even... Did I even take a proper look at the... Uh, I did. I never took a proper look at the crime scene. Which I highly doubt that there's anything strange there. And then... Um, Autopsy report. I didn't even take a look at this yet, which should have been the first thing that I did. Uh, Pop Wendy Banks, occupation pawnbroker, broker, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Single bullet wound, upper upper half of the victim's back, no visible signs of trauma. Autopsy finding instant death from the from the poster. From the poster. From the, um, what do you call it? Bullet wound in the heart, bullet into the body from the back. Gently raised. Okay. At the trajectory. Okay, cool. So nothing crazy there. Today's paper. What the hell is this even for? Palm broken parishes. How awful. Virginia, I mean. Tomorrow's headline will read blah blah blah. She said this already. But I never really had a chance to look at it. Yeah, something like that. Possible I go even bigger. Bigger? How? Okay. Protects planet. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for tomorrow now. It's gonna be great. Is there anything on the back? What the hell is this for? This is a sensational story lowered down the front page. Okay. Ministry whole classified secret may have been leaked overseas from Ministry of Justice. For a ten year old. Ira certainly has her finger on on pulse of old news. You notice the contradiction? Okay. Let's see, communications are being interrupted, but uh, and being intercepted. But how would somebody do that? That's the question, isn't it? Come up three different possible methods so far. Are you looking for a new career, Reno? No, of course not. I wonder. Perhaps this is what Lord Strongheart was talking about yesterday. <laughs> not a Chinese spy. Thanks, spy. <laughs> Thanks for the follow. Uh, could be and could explain Greg, uh, Gregsy's running from the pillar and Okay. Alright. Update that, but that doesn't pertain to what we're doing right now. Oh, you never followed? <laughs> it's okay. Um, pawnbroker ticket gone. Iris manuscript, blood samples, genus, genus representation, blah, 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 okay. Hmm. I mean, I'm trying to prove, what I'm trying to prove is that they wouldn't really know if Wendy Banks had a gun or not, but the photo didn't do that, and I assumed that maybe I just pressed the wrong statement, right? Because I got the information that they said they never actually saw him. Never saw anything. Before the gunshot, we heard a voice, right? The bloke on the place was holding a gun, and I pressed this after I pressed the one before, right? And I thought it would automatically interrupt it, Lamy well, didn't, uh, didn't give me half a fright, shooter, okay, think the shooter's gonna come out the door. We stuck everything back to where we found it. We could've shot the pawnbroker, see, we never had a chance, we did. I don't know, I'm gonna try pressing just this one earlier, right here, cause I, I felt like it should've been interrupted, but maybe not. So in fact, you heard the voice. We're gonna try simultaneously. Yeah, we did. Although, yeah, okay. Don't want to get shot. Give me the gun. Bang. Hmm. Crane acted tragically missed. Which is we're coming from? Of course we could. From the other side of the door. From the storeroom. Victim was found dead. You can say I'm stumped on this one. That's also partially due to the fact that I kept getting distracted, but, <laughs> you know, my mind kept wandering. I thought you both knew Mr. Winbeck, uh, knew Mr. Winbeck in the sound of his voice. So that would mean what? Okay. Yes, Council, indeed it would. Nah, we didn't know the geezer. 
Okay. Value your lives, you will tell us money. Good that his granny's dead. Summarize then, immediately after hearing the voice of the victim, you hear the gunshot. Causing the stubble, blah blah blah. Yeah, we're clumsy. Don't forget we tidied up a little bit. Okay. Well then I guess there's a piece of evidence I gotta use then. Issue from Palmer Super Mr. Mason. Did I even check this? The victim found deceased. It resulted in acquittal. Yeah, okay, nothing really crazy. Crime scene photo. Let me check this gun. So, ammunition is still loaded in five of the- wait, what? Five of the six cylinders. Yes, which tells us only a single shot has been fired. Okay, so they did shoot one shot from this. Okay. Alright. Alright. The bullet that hit Hurley, in fact, isn't it? Yes. It appears almost as soon as we walked in when he makes door. Okay. Make those brothers pay. Okay, so now we know. So... Hmm. So where the fuck did the other bullet come from? <laughs> Alright. Gino's holding, but was found unconscious. There are signs of a single discharge. Uh... Oh! I'm sorry. I'm so dumb. Oh my god. Wow. I am so, so sorry. This is what happens when I get distracted. Fuck. Yeah, 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 voice yelling, give me the gun. Blow my own place, hold the gun, so he should have fired instead of yelling at the girl. Yeah. <laughs> uh, blow on the place, hold me. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um. But which piece of evidence do I use for that? Cause, cause they're saying that she shot him point blank, right? But he was shot in the back. So where is the uh? Let's see. Got everything back. Okay. Now I just gotta know. I think it's this one, right? And then I guess it would be. Does this come with the other photograph? No, we don't have the other. Well, it wasn't a photograph, right? With her, with her laying down. That's just like a memory. Uh. Okay. Well. Guess I'm just gonna use this one. On the wrong statement. Or maybe the wrong piece of evidence. I know I'm on the right track now. I just don't know what to use it on. Right? I don't know if I should use the gun or the picture. Just before the gunshot, we heard a voice yelling, give me the gun. Let's see. Autopsy report, maybe? Yeah, but on which it's one of these two sentences right and what I'm just at first I was trying to prove that he didn't have a gun but now it's stupid because their testimony is going like she pointed it at him and he's talking to her but apparently he was shot in the back so you know what yeah probably autopsy report because it says he was shot in the back and I mean right before the gunshot like why would he be yelling that if he's not looking at her so yeah autopsy that's probably like the best but honestly Objection. Or the picture? I don't fucking know. <laughs> like, like I know, like I know. I'm having another fucking situation here, you know. Like I'm on the right track, but I just don't know how to put it there. I wish sometimes I can just jump in the game and fucking just yell it at them. I know that was a problem I had with like one of like some of the other Phoenix Wright games, where like I already knew what happened, but. I just wouldn't say it at the right time. <laughs> I would say it before it was the right time. Um, I'm gonna save that so that I can just quick load if I fuck it up. But um, I guess it's the photo then, right? Objection. No? What the fuck? Maybe the other. Maybe it's the other sentence. And this is why AA games tilt me. You know, sometimes you know. Sometimes it is my fault, I will say. 
but the one time that pisses me off the most was in Justice for All when we're like in the descriptions of the um of the evidence or whatever like they tell you the description that's important but one of the items didn't have the description that they wanted you to you didn't have a description of the uh fact that they want you to use for the item and it was a fucking key and they were like yeah the they're like yeah we're talking about the key that has the green jewel in it and the you know and the information they were looking for is that this key has a green jewel in it but that wasn't part of the fucking description like yeah you could see it but it wasn't part of the description so in your mind you're like who cares if it has a green jewel in it the game didn't make any point of that being important so why would they <laughs> like you know um see all right did not you think oh wait no that's not the right sentence it's the one after that hold it a gun so you should have just fired instead of yelling at the girl okay what did I use on this one? I used her gun on this one. Well, I used the gun on this one. So, where's the autopsy? Uh, from the back. Objection. Okay. And this is why. And this is why you do this, so that you don't ever have to deal with some bullshit like this ever again. <laughs> so you don't have to deal with them going you're guilty right like I'm on the right I'm on the right track so maybe it's the Objection. photo okay so it's the photo with that one alright cool I was on the right track but you know need to choose from three pieces of evidence to use against these two sentences and you have to pick the right combo I know it's so fucking sometimes it's annoying because because Watch what he's about to say. He's probably going to say, how was he yelling at her if he was shot in the back? Like, and if he says that, why the fuck couldn't I use the autopsy point that says, that clearly states he was shot in the back? Or the gun where the, where the evidence clearly states that one bullet was fired and it was from Gina, <laughs> right? You know? On the night in question, the victim, Mr. Winniebanks, was wielding a gun. Is that correct? That is, Gov. You got the picture. It is Nash. It is. No question. And yet, photographic evidence obtained immediately after the incident clearly shows that Mr. Winniebanks was not holding a firearm of any description. You could have used... You could have used, like, you literally could have... I mean... That's also why, I mean, I'm going to give them a little bit of leeway because they didn't give me a penalty for showing them the photo because that also proved that he wasn't holding a gun, but it also showed your defendant holding a gun. So it's not advantageous for you, but you know, it was still on the right track, right? You what? Gordon Bennett, that ain't right. Who the fuck is Gordon Bennett? There can be no question that the victim's revolver was used in the incident. I will remind the court that Mr. Wendy Banks' gun found at the scene. Not only was, was it identified as the murder weapon, but it was found in the accused hand. Okay. Yes. Yeah, the Molly, the Molly Tooler? Oh, the Molly Tooler. The Mall Tooler? Mall Tooler? What? The Mall Tooler used the victim's own gun to finish him off. Give me the gun! Ah! Kind of like that. Hold it. Stay exactly where you are. Right there. Huh? If the crime had taken place, as you could colorfully describe in your testimony, it would give reason to an undefi uh, undefi uh, fuck. undeniable and significant inconsistency in the final moments that you just acted out. Goodness, are you sure, counsel? I am positive. You intrigue me, my learned friend, but let's see some evidence to support your claim. Where's the proof that demonstrates that the inconsistency... Okay, this is where you use the uh, autopsy report. Take that! According to the testimony, the witness claimed to have heard a shout of Give me the gun! Followed by a gunshot. They should become professional actors. I mean, he says that, right? He's like, aw, tragic that they didn't. 
I mean, to be honest, they are professional actors. It's called Waluigi and Wario. <laughs> it's basically what they are. Indeed, with the two events happening almost simultaneously, or so we've been led to believe. Yes, that's right. Now, if that testimony is true, it would mean that at the moment of death, the victim and his attacker would have been facing each other. However, in the autopsy report, it clearly states that the victim died instantly after being shot from behind. Huh? So, as I've stated before, there is an undeniable inconsistency in your testimony, Mr. and Mr. Sulkin. Sulkin? Sulkin? Skulkin? They're Skulkin? <laughs> but, but, it's the God, it's the God's honest truth. It is, Nash, it is. When, when he was shot that night. The shopkeeper had a gun in his hand, and I saw it with my own bleeding eyes. Did I hear you right just now? You actually saw Mr. Winnie Bake holding a gun. Uh, something like that. I might have slipped out. Ladies and gentlemen, you have all just heard the admission by these two witnesses. That on the night in question, they actually saw with their own eyes the victim wielding a gun. Which can only mean that despite their testimony to the- wait, what? Which can only mean that despite their testimony to the contrary. The Skulkin brothers must have encountered the victim in person. Uh, uh, Nash. Uh. Alright. Witnesses, explain yourselves at once. Well, the thing is, you see, what had happened was... Yeah, it wasn't supposed to, um... It would seem that my previous warnings fell on deaf ears. I made it quite clear that false witness would be the death of you. Am I to understand that you replaced the untruths of your original testimony with renewed lies? Hmm, ever so sorry, Governor. Truth is, see, we, um... Cut it out, Nash. Cut it out. If we blab now, you know what they'll do to us. E. What are you talking about? Let me make your position here perfectly clear. You will talk. There is... <laughs> you will talk. This is not a meme. <laughs> there is no other option available to you. Mm. Ruff, come on. The game's up. But... Well, we have, uh, we'll have our guts for, they'll have our guts for gut, for gutters, gutters, gut. I can't say that word. In case it hasn't quite sunken in yet, no matter how hard you try to hide it, the truth will come out. Mm -hmm. On the night in question, it is now apparent that the brothers, that the brothers met face to face with the victim. I demand that you testify again to explain the precise circumstances under which this meeting took place. Well... Do we have to? On pain of death. I suggest you make yourselves fully aware that this is your very last chance to tell the truth. Alright. Counter with the victim. Alright. So we just, so we just got inside the gaff and have a side of, of a relief with the, wait, what? Have a gaff and, Jesus. All right, so we just got inside the gaff and, and, and Abe, had, Abe, I can't, fuck. Whatever. Leave the side of, um, you know, leave the side of relief when the geezer showed his mug. Okay. Give me the gun, he bellowed, and then he flew at us like he was possessed. I thought we had it. For an old geezer, the bloke was strong as an ox. He chucked me over the counter. I pulled my gun on him, and then I legged it and legged it for the door into the back room. We never had nothing to do with killing him. That was what that was what happened, I swear. Okay. Their accents are fucking killing me, dude. So you're now telling us the moments before the victim was killed in the store. You, in fact, encounter him in the main part of the shop. 
Well, yeah. Sorry. Well? We find ourselves at an interesting, uh, as in, at an interesting juncture. This change, uh, this changes matters considerably. But, but honest, Governor, this time. This time, this time, yeah, we, we ain't, we ain't got nothing more to hide. Very well. Counsel for the defense, you may proceed with your cross-examination. I will do that. Yes, my lord. This is it. The moment I've been waiting for. I feel like Akihiko, you know, when you're all out of attack starting, he's like, all right, I've been waiting for this. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Just got inside the gaff, blah, blah, blah. Leave geezer, showed his mug. Gave me the gun, he bellowed, and then flew at us like he was possessed. Hold it! You mentioned that Mr. Winnebeck shouted those words in the previous testimony, too. However, you claimed that you heard him yelling them from the other side of the storeroom door. Oh, <laughs> we did? But the truth is, he was shouting those words at you, wasn't he? They need some truth wizards <laughs> in the AA universe, Jesus. Like his D&D. What's that move called in D&D? What is it, like, Circle of Truth? It's like anyone in this circle must tell the truth. <laughs> or, or do a wisdom save or something like that. Was the victim Mr. Winniebanks wielding a gun at the time? Uh, was he ever? Blimey. A great ugly barrel ad pointed straight at my front piece. Yikes. So what you're saying is... You definitely saw Mr. Winniebanks with a gun at that time, is that right? It is, Gov, it is. Spot on. Then all of a sudden, he came at us. He did. It was, be it was Bedlam. I didn't know. I didn't know who was going. Who he was going for? Clearly, all got. Um, we were clearly all going for each other. Like Nash said, we thought we had it. I mean, okay. When old Giza the bloke was strong as an ox, he chucked me over the counter. Hold it! Yes, I noted that you mentioned the counter in your previous testimony too. Well, yeah, of course we did. He knocked over a load of books, a candlestick, and some skull whatnot. That got tingled in some, uh, that got tingled in some marionette. We knocked over a framed picture, whatnot, uh, whatnot, them scales on the floor. So, in fact, it wasn't the sound of the gunshot that shook you and made you knock those things off the counter. Well, Big Bruv, uh, uh, what? Big Bruv here went flying over the counter like the gunshot. I can tell you. This old geezer pinned him. He did, now nah, she did. If you had if you had been there, the bloke would have flattened me like a blooming pancake in seconds. At the time in question, the alarm was raised at the local police station via a secret cable from the pawn brokery. There's a button under the counter you used to activate it, which is presumably pressed by the victim. That's right. And the brothers fled the scene and back onto the street. They ran straight into the arriving police, didn't they? Poor Mr. Windybank. He did everything he could to protect the shop. Yeah. Truth wizards are an actual thing, by the way. You mean like, <laughs> you mean the guys with the truth serum? <laughs> Man, that whole bit from like, if, if you watch the Ant-Man movie or whatever, that whole bit about the truth serum is like the best part. Ant-Man and the Wasp. He's like, he's like, oh my god, it is true serum. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Is that true serum, bro? It's not true serum. <laughs> oh my god, it is true serum. Not uh, just people who have very, who are very good at telling when people are lying. Oh yeah, that too. I mean, you check, you check people out for their little, you know, twitches and inconsistencies and stuff like that, and the different, uh, the different sounds of their voices and stuff like that. Pulled the gun on him and legged it for the front door. Hold it! Okay. Were you intending to shoot Mr. Winnie Banks? Nah, never. I was just, you know. Looking out for me, bruv, weren't I? He was being flattened, don't uh he was being flattened, don't forget. By a man whose shop was being burgled, yes. 
And then, the man fled into the storeroom where you pointed your gun at him, is that it? Yeah, that's it. Shoved me away, then ran off the door. Shut himself in. There's something about the last remark. Something that doesn't quite ring true. Hmm. I wonder why Mr. Windybank ran into his own storeroom. What? Well, according to what everyone's saying, Ginny was there waiting for him with a gun. Hmm. Yes, that's right. Gina allegedly used Mr. Winnebank's gun to threaten him and force him to open the storeroom door. In which case, how did the gun end up in Mr. Winnebank's hands again? I have no idea, but that is strange, isn't it? This little inconsistency could be significant. I should make a, ment a mental note of this. Okay. Look, the point is, me and me bruv here. That's right, Nash, that's right, me and me bruv here. Okay. I think I might get the picture now. Let's see if I can piece this together before they fucking tell me, like I did with the last trial, because I'm so fucking smart. I'm so super duper. Um. Maybe. Okay. Gina walks in. Gone on the counter. You know, Mr. Winniebanks lets his guard down because she was there earlier, right? Little pickpocket. It's not gonna do much. She then grabs the gun. Show me the back room. Okay, I'll show you the back room. She's not really gonna hurt him. He knows she's not really gonna hurt him. He knocks her out. She's unconscious. He then hears people enter the, enter the shop. Comes out with the gun in his hand, right? I mean, not, did he have the gun in his hand at that point? I think he might have. Yeah, comes out with the gun in his hand. He shoots, maybe he shot, I'm not sure. They said they heard a gunshot, right? And they had guns, so he probably said, put the gun down, shot, bam. That bullet went into the went into the fucking um calendar. Right? These guys startled by it or some bullshit. I don't know. Whatever. You know, he misses his shot, he then charges them, you know, they tussle a little bit, right? Then he runs to the back room. I, I don't think that these guys killed them. I really don't. Right? Someone else was there, though. But they were there with someone else. That's what I'm saying, right? And that person probably left, told them to clean up while they were leaving. But whatever. So, they're tussling. He realizes that Gina's in the back room unconscious, because he, he probably knocked her out. Went there to protect her, right? You know, he still has a gun in his hand, probably missed a shot. Went there to protect her with his life. And then, that's where he got cornered by whatever unknown third party shot him in the back, Frame Gina for it. Unknown third party walks out. Walks out. Goes, hey, you two, clean this shit up or I'll have your guts. Right? Okay. They, he walks out. Or he or she or whatever walks out. Those two stay behind. Clean up. While they're cleaning up, Ryunosuke and Sherlock Holmes fucking, or Sherlock Holmes, whatever. They come down. These guys run into panic because they're like, fuck, we're caught now. It ain't worth it. Right? They shoot their gun, her luck gets shot, they run out, get caught by the cops. I feel like that's how it went. Right? The only way I can think of her being knocked out without being hurt, because if someone went in there with the with the idea of the kill, you know, they probably would have killed her too. They probably just didn't know she was there until after the fact and went, okay, this is good, we're gonna pin it on her. Right? I feel like that's what that's what happened. Something like that. I have a good feeling about that one. Never had enough, uh, we never had nothing to do with killing him. Okay, so you never had nothing to do with killing him, but... Hold it! Do you know someone who did? You say you had nothing to do with it. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. The Giza went and shut himself in the back room, he did. Locked it was from the inside. We know it was, because we tried to open it. But it's a decent, but it's a decent door, a good one, uh, good and strong. Wouldn't budge an inch. So in the end, the situation remains unchanged. Hmm. Inside the store room with the pawnbroker, there was only one other person. The sole person who could possibly have shot the victim, the accused Miss Gina Lestrade. 
It would indeed appear so. What say you to that, Council? I don't know. Was there an, was there anyone else apart from Gina who could possibly have been in there? Mmm, could have been. Could have been, but I mean, can I just like say the name and sneak that in there? Or wouldn't I need more? When I need more evidence, because you know Egbert is still at large, right? We know he has motive, but I'm not sure if I can just like say that. No, I'm gonna say no one else was in there at that point. He's right. Gina's the only one. There was no one else in the room. With an attitude like that, Runo, it really will be all over. And now a ten-year-old is reading the expression on my face. Well, you just don't have that many wide-eyed sweating, smug, and happy. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> well, you just don't have that <laughs> You just don't have that many wide-eyed sweating, smug, and happy. That's about it. Oh, there's more than that, isn't there? Anyways, I think you might want to consider some other possibilities here. Or rather, I think you have to. Otherwise, you won't get anywhere. Or rather, you won't get anywhere. <laughs> I'm just here for moral support, remember? Hmm. So, that's what all the brothers are, are willing to reveal. They're still hiding something, don't you think? Yes, I'm sure of it. And not just a minor detail, either. I'm almost certain, because there are two of the poor... Um, because these two poor Mr. Winnie Bank, well... You can't let them get away, right, Runo? I know, but I get the feeling that there's even less evidence at my disposal this time to prove that they did it. Alright, well I guess I'll just press the sentence again and just choose that there was someone else there, and then probably just say Egbert. That's the only thing I can think of right now, to like, move it on, but in my head, the way things play out is that Gina's in there by herself, right? And that Egbert is still outside with the other two, or whoever. I'm just saying Egbert as like a, uh... That's kind of like a, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a placeholder. Never had nothing to do with killing him. Okay, so, I'm gonna press this. And I'm gonna get back to that, that thought of questioning. That thought of questioning? Is that even a phrase? Okay. Was there anyone else there? Could have been. Mr. and Mr. Sulkin. Skulkin. I keep saying Sulkin. I don't know why. Skulkin. Eh? What? What's that look for? From the moment you admitted that you encountered the victim face to face that night, the course of this trial changed completely. It did? What is your point? my learned friend. The question we must answer is, who could have shot Mr. Windybanks? And it is believed that the defense that, wow, <clears throat> and it is the belief of the defense that the defendant is not the only possible answer at all. You have my attention. In that case, let us return to the plan on the premise. Okay. The victim was killed in the storeroom, which was locked from the inside. Those are the facts, so pray. Also, don't forget that there's literally a window that was unlocked. Like, I'm assuming if you're gonna lock something from the inside, not only you would lock the door itself, but you would lock the window, like the little see-through window that they have on that door from the inside as well. But that was unlocked. So theoretically, with the right tools, Depending on what kind of lock it is, you can just open that little window, stick, I mean, how far the knob is or whatever too, or the angle you're going at. You can either stick your hand in there and lock it yourself, or fucking use a hanger or some shit, or like a stick or something, you know what I mean? Those are the facts, so pray, what other possible answer to the question of who shot the man could there be? Counsel? You must not provide answers to the court in respect of two conundrums. Oh shit, okay. Watch me fuck this up. Let me just... 
Let me just do this, cause I got two I got two penalties left before they fucking hang me. Two, my lord? Twice as many chances to be right? Maybe. Indeed. Namely, from what location did the culprit shoot the victim? And furthermore, where was the victim at the time? Okay. Understood, my lord. Got that, that should be easy. Are you alright, Runo? I'm not entirely sure, but there's one thing I'm sure about. If I can prove that there's credible <clears throat> is that there's a credible new alternative to what happened, it would change Gina's prospects hugely. So now, time for some clarity. So, uh, show the courtroom in this plan the answer to the question posed by his lordship. Which question? Which one are we doing first? Do you believe someone else to have killed the victim in the cave from where the person fired the gun? I mean, given where he was laying, it's a pretty sure shot. So, right fucking here. Take that! The defense believes that the culprit would have shot the victim from the location here. And answer the second question. Assuming the culprit fired from the location indicated, where would the victim be at the time? Uh, probably about here. Take that! The culprit shot the victim from outside the storeroom. Continue. Okay, fucking Smash Brothers announcer. <laughs> Wait, continue? Yes. Mr. Winnie Banks died instantly from a bullet wound to his back. Probably protecting Gina. Looking at the stain of blood on the storeroom floor, it does appear that the body was moved after death. Which tells us that he was almost certainly shot while he was in the storeroom. I mean, did I say was moved? Oh, my bad. I probably, it probably said wasn't and I read it wrong. However, the crucial point is, where was the shooter when the fatal bullet, bullet was fired? Now, they did say the trajectory was a low diagonal one. So, hmm. I mean, to be fair, he also could have just stuck his hand in the window of the door and just, you know, pointed it in there, right? That would have been like a funky angle. So, are you adamant that the shot was fired from outside the storeroom? I am. Well, according to this Skulkin Brothers earlier's testimony, I pulled me gun on him, and then legged it for the door in the back room. When Mr. Winnie Banks ran away through the uh, ran away through the door. We have to assume that the door was open at the time. Huh? Yeah, it still could have been open too. You know, it was precisely at that moment when the victim was fleeing for his life. That these brothers had the perfect opportunity to shoot the man in the back once he was inside the storeroom. I don't think they did it. I think someone else did it. Come to think of it, do you remember what the prosecutor said at the start of the trial? Moving to the findings of Scotland Yard's corner, his report states that the bullet entered the body on a rising diagonal trajectory. It means the victim was likely shot by someone significantly shorter in height than himself. That's a red herring. I feel like it's a red herring. Poor man, shot while running as fast as he could. Mm, of course. He would have been leaning forward as he was running away. So even the bullet was fired horizontally. Oh wow, I didn't think about it like that. That could have worked too. Hmm. So even the bullet was fired horizontally, it would still have entered its body on an upward trajectory. So, the culprit isn't necessarily someone shorter than Mr. Winnie Bank. Objection. I'm sure my learned friend can't have forgotten that the storeroom door was found closed and locked from the inside. You claim the victim was shot as he fled into the room. Do you also claim his corpse was dexterous enough to turn the key in the lock? Uh, but, hmm. what if someone else locked the door? Yes, there's someone else who could have locked the storeroom door. Is that so? Very well then, counsel. 
Present your hypothesis, uh, your hypothesis to the court. If the scenario just described, the defense, uh, wow, well, the defense's assertion is that the victim was shot from outside the storeroom. In which case, who shut the lock? Oh, uh, who shut the lock? Storm door from the inside. I mean, if we're gonna point fingers, the only option is. Hmm. The only option would be Gina. Who shot the. No, I'm gonna go. It, it has to be Wendy Banks, right? I'm. Because my course of thinking is that the door wasn't open. He ran in, locked it, but the window was still open. Obviously, the person could only have been... Just a moment, Runo. Hmm? What is it? I'm just about to point dramatic. That's about to point dramatically at the prosecution and unveil an amazing revelation. Sorry, but just before you do, maybe you should take a deep breath and think things through once more. The storm room was locked from the inside, so whoever locked it must have been inside too, don't you think? Uh, like Mr. Wendy Banks, you mean? Yes. Except he was dead. But there's someone else who could have been. The only other person, really. Oh, only one other. Okay. You're out of time, I'm afraid. Which you must be penalized. Okay. See, I didn't want to say Gina. Because last time, when I gave evidence with Gina in it, they're like, why would you do that? It makes your position bad. <laughs> okay. Well, it's Gina. Take that! Obviously, the person who locked the door was the only other person inside the storeroom at the time. The defendant, Miss Gina Lestrade. Objection! That's absurd. You're suggesting that the accused deliberately engineered this sealed room? For what possible reason? Such actions would only serve to tighten the loose, uh, tighten the noose around her neck. I'm inclined to agree, I must say. Well, counsel. Uh, yeah. That's a tricky one, that. Is it? Half-baked notions have no place in my courtroom, counsel. Remember remember that, please. Hmm. Okay, so let's say that he didn't knock her unconscious. Right? And she is the one that closed the door. Then the only thing I can think of is that he was shot when the door is open, she closed it to save herself, and I guess just... I don't know, maybe pass out because she was in the room with a dead body due to stress or something? That's all I can think of. Alright. I mean, but then who... But then someone else would have to get in the room. Or, unless, you know, no one else would have to get in the room. When you think about it, I'm assuming she didn't know that the gun would have one bullet in it and that he probably already fired it. So... Maybe just for protection, she grabbed the gun, right, and just huddled in the corner. Almost go without saying, doesn't it? It is, does. Uh, it, it does. Wow, it is. Well, if I was Jenny in that situation, I know I would have locked the door as quickly as I could. I mean, those two burglars had just fired a gun in her direction, hadn't they? Oh yeah, obviously. Before the two brothers arrived, Miss Lestrade and Mr. Winnie Banks were in the storeroom together. Now, I don't know, I don't know what went on between them at the time, but at some point, Mr. Winnie Banks must have heard the intruders break into his shop and left the storeroom. Intruders, eh? That's right, bruv. Your theory is correct. That will leave the accusation. Mm, that leaves the accused alone in the storeroom. Yes, it would. Then probably one, uh, probably only moments later, the victim fled back to the storeroom, hoping to escape danger. Hit in the back by the bullet, Mr. Wendy Banks fell to the floor where he, where he, <clears throat> where he was just inside the storeroom. And what we have to ask ourselves now is, what the defendant would have done in the moment. I see where you're going with this. Outside the storeroom, there's terrifying killer who had just murdered Mr. Winniebanks. 
As soon as the thought struck Miss Lestrade, she slammed the door shut and locked it. In order to save her own life. Hold it. What? I ain't, I mean, we ain't the ones who done it. We ain't... We ain't, uh, we ain't gonna, have we? Have we? Uh, you haven't... Uh, you gotta believe us. I mean, come on. We never shoot no one. Protection. That's blatantly untrue. I know for a fact that you would. Because before my very own eyes, you shot Herlock Shlomes. Okay, listen. <laughs> that moment of Jim just going, okay, listen, hold up. <laughs> There's only one logical conclusion here. Mr. and Mr. So uh, Skulkin, I keep wanting to say Skulkin, I don't know why. Skulkin, your brothers, uh, you brothers are very, have every opportunity to have been the true perpetrators, the true perpetrators of Mr. Winnie Banks' murders. Hmm. Again, I don't think they did it. Where does this leave us? You mean to say it wasn't the pickpocket who shot the pawnbroker after all? I should have known that these three brothers... <laughs> three brothers. That was amazing, Rena. All the members of the jury seem to be firmly on your side now. I know. First time ever. And probably the last. Well, I think you've done it. Surely. They gotta give him the verdict or not. Oh, shit. What are you laughing about? An admirable... An admirable... Eh. Admirable effort, my learned friend. What now? He's laughing. You find the situation amusing, Lord Von Zykes. I find myself, uh, I myself find the defendant's argument more persuasive. God, he's pouring the wine. I dare say, such a, uh, such, uh, cinem, cinem, I can't even say the fucking word. Uh, I'm, I'm stumbled here. How long have I been doing this for? <laughs> About like four hours. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. Oh, man. Uh, let's see. Is the bread and butter of the streets perform, uh, performers in your provocal eastern nation? What the fuck? But such blatant, such blatantly malicious conjecture tricks. Con mm. Conjuring tricks. I don't even know why, where I got contracted from. Conjuring tricks amount to nothing more than an excusable uh, pity, pity foggery here? What the fuck? Pity froggery. What? The hypothesis you put forward is abstent, abstent, mm, I can't say a fucking word. Ostensibly, ostent, ugh, ostensibly, credibly cannot and will not stand. Because, you see, it contains a fatal flaw. Fatal flaw? A fatal fury? Did you mean to tell me that you're unaware of your logical findings? Your logical failings? My bad. I say, Lord Van Zykes. Might be an idea to explain this bally con conjuring trick, or whatever it is, to the troops on the ground. The fatal flaw is my learnt friend's argument is really very simple to understand. Assuming you're not too dim-witted to count bullets. By George, count bullets. Oh dear. He noticed then. Huh? What's everybody talking about? Council? Yes, sir? Tell the court how many bullets were found at the scene of the crime. Two. Two bullets. Correct. The first, which had hit the victim in the back, ending his life. And the second, which struck the detective, Mr. Herlock's not. No, there's three bullets. There's the other one. What about the one in the calendar? The defense pre uh, the, uh, fuck. the defense presented a picture showing the damage caused by the second bullet earlier in the proceedings. The bullet which injured Mr. Sloan appeared to have passed through his body. Oh, it passed through. I thought the bullet was in him. Ooh. Okay. It passed through his body. It went straight through him? Jesus. Ooh, that's a bad one. Damn. It went straight through him? Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. Damn. 
Either that or it grazed them, but I mean, that's a lot of blood. <laughs> okay. Injured Mr. Sloan's appeared to have passed through his body to strike the calendar. Okay. Your lordship understanding is correct. Furthermore, you know there are two firearms involved in the incident. The revolver belonged to the victim, Mr. Winniebanks. And the, uh, and the Skulkin Brothers revolver. The evidence shows that a single bullet was fired from each gun. Yes, indeed it does. A single bullet from each. Now then, my learned friend. You yourself told the court only moments ago that these two brothers shot Mr. Herlock Trumps right before your eyes. Yes, I did. Oh my goodness. I think you'll find that if the single bullet that was fired from the brothers hit Mr. Sloan, it means Wendy Banks not shot by not shot by same gun. Stop. Only one bullet. Stop. Exactly. Yes. This Nipponese street performer presented an ostensibly obst fuck, I can't say the word. Obstensibly credi credible argument. However, it was never anything more than a than a diversionary trick, with no hope of standing up to scrutiny. Damn it. I'm telling you, there's a third party. I just inhaled and like breathed deeply because I was trying to hold in a yawn, but I couldn't do it. It was very hard. It was very hard to do. Pray forgive, pray forgive the discourtesy of flinging a dread, flinging the dreads of this hollow nectar into the public gallery. Lord Von Zykes. My man just let it rain on the gallery, you know what I mean? <laughs> but this court needs to open his eyes. The accused, Miss Gina Lestrade, is no ordinary little girl. Despite her young years, she can regrettably no longer be described as a juvenile. No, the person in the dock is far from law-abiding citizen. She had oh god, she has a past riddle. She has a past riddle with criminal conduct. The truth is, the accused broke into the pawnbrokery on the night in question with loathsome intent. As we can see beyond a doubt in the print which depicts her threatening the victim with the murder weapon. And I have here in my possessions one more piece of evidence that the prosecution wishes to present. The disc. I'll be taking that whatever it is. I had to yawn, sorry about that. <laughs> I'll be taking whatever it is of Mr. McGilded down to the yard. Thank you very much. No, don't. Don't give it to him. It's mine. That's mine. I'm sorry, miss, but anything belonging to McGill did has to be taken in as evidence now. Yes, that music box disc, McGill did's music box, music box disc. The very day before the hateful murder of Mr. Windybank, the accused attempted to make off with the article, which clearly doesn't belong to her. And with none of the, sub and none of the subtlety of pickpocket, I might add, but by brute force and brazen Im impudence. Good gracious. Make no mistake, any sympathy for the accused on accounts of her years is misguided and dangerous. There are no depths to which this girl would not stop if pushed, no crime she would not commit. The court forgets the fact at, uh, at this peril. Hmm, I see. I think it would be prudent to take this music box text into evidence, Council. Hold it! Hmm? Lord Von Zykes, I am... Inspector Gregson. What? Yes, Inspector? We had a meeting yesterday at the yard with the prosecution service, and, um... I, I think it was agreed that the disc wouldn't be used as, evid as evidence. What is this all about? Why is the inspector acting strangely? That's the first time he said anything to Von Zykes at all. 
I'm unaware of such meeting. But those were the instructions right from the top. The government bigwits were, in were intent. Inspector, I am the prosecutor, and I alone determine how to present my case. Your warning is noted. Thank you. The prosecution wishes to proceed with the submission of this disc as evidence, my lord. It, indeed. Bailiff! Okay. Now we're getting the fucking government involved. Jesus. The prosecution has established the accused motive, uh, the accused's motive, opportunity, and baseness of character. There's nothing more to add. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I await your informed decision and rest my case. If I don't, I don't believe it. I had the jury on my side for once, for all, for all of five minutes. Oh dear. It wasn't even four or five minutes, Bruno. My lord! Wonder if I might say something at this point. Proceed, Mr. Foreman. Been stumbling about in a bit of a fog up till now, if truth be told. But, all of a sudden... The answer is bally obvious to me and my men. There's only one thing for it. Oh no. Very well. The court will hear from the jury. Ladies and gentlemen, you will present your learnings as the defendant's... Oh, fuck, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you will present your learnings as to the defendant's capability... Culpability... Fuck, you know what I mean. Guilty. 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 <laughs> Guilty. The old man, he's just like, mm, Guilty. And you got the revolutionary? Guilty. <laughs> Sounds a little bit like Emperor Palpatine. Do it. <laughs> you have a consensus among the juries, it seems. When you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth. <laughs> That's my line. I wrote that for Hurley. How dare he use it against us? Don't worry, Iris. I don't think we're finished yet. There's still more to this case than we realize. There must be, because there's one thing that I'm absolutely certain of. Gina didn't shoot Mr. Wendy Banks. That's beyond any doubt. Very well. We will proceed with the second summation examination of the day. Mr. Foreman, are you and the other jurors ready? The Air Depth Squadron is primed and ready for action, sir. Very good. So, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will each explain on what grounds you have now determined to defend, uh, to determine the defendant to be guilty. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm starting to feel it, you know what I mean? What time is it? Where the fuck did I sit my phone at? All right, sorry, just looking at the time. Jesus, I need a fucking beat to be continued. <laughs> Once a rogue, always a rogue, I say. Hmm, different breed of us law-abiding citizens. As only two bullets were found at the scene, I would say the whole case is done and dusted. You don't need a stereoscope to see the truth here. Every which way you look at it, it was the pickpocket. Hmm, I never imagined that simple operation would cause such such grief. Jesus. The accused attempted a theft of the previous day. I can see that I'm in for a busy day ahead. I am <laughs> I am ballistic expert. I have seen many shootings. The, you shouldn't say that out loud. <laughs> there is nothing I do not know about guns. Hmm. It would seem that there's little remain uh, little remaining room for doubt. Have to, I love how he's just constantly smoking that pipe. He's like, hmm, I have to admit, <laughs> I have to admit, I was rather, I was rather bold over 
uh, bowled over by the argument put forward by the chap in black. But when it fell apart like a house of cards, all right, Kevin Spacey, <laughs> when it fell apart like a house of cards, I saw that I uh, saw that I jolly well been hoodwinked. Well, no more. Uh, the whole courtroom is turning against me. It's not fair, Iris. The prosecution's being mean. Just because Jenny done some things that she should have done in the past, it doesn't make her a murderer. Moida. Are you talking about Moida? Allow me to savor this fruitfully vintage wine. <laughs> this fruitfully vintage while I savor the spectacle of your fruitless, fruitless debate amongst the matter. Here to the truth coming out. Eventually. And that's enough. Pram uh, that's enough Pramble. Council, proceed with the summonation examination. Alright. Yes, my lord. Okay. Let's see what we got. All right, two bullets were found, don't need to see it, still talking about that bullshit. All right, what about you, Mr. Ballistic Expert? Hold it! I thought you were just a tourist. Good day, I am visiting London for sightseeing. I would like to take bus to Crystal Tower, please. There's no way he's just visiting tourists. So, you're a ballistic expert. Who knew? I have much experience with guns. Uh-huh. I have lived through many, how would you say, um, extreme, violent bath of, no, blood of, uh, ah, extremely violent blood, bl <laughs> blood paths, perhaps? Ah, those. Extremely violent blood paths. <laughs> Damn it. English is very difficult to Considering the sort of people you're associated with, I'm surprised you still have a tongue. All right. Anyways, if you have a question about bullets and guns, you ask me. There is something I do not know. No, uh, there's something that I do not know. Wow. There's nothing I do not know. No mystery I cannot solve. He's very confident in his knowledge about guns, that's for sure. But if possible, please only in the Russian language. He's not very confident in his knowledge of English, though, is he? Nope. Still, we should bear in mind, he, uh, he's our man and <laughs> he's our man if there's a mystery about guns or bullets. Okay. Monzaik's managed to convince everyone. When you have eliminated, when you have eliminated the impossible, he said, but he hasn't. If we're gonna fight back, we need more material. Yeah, I know. Okay, you don't gotta tell me how to fight back. I got this. Now I just gotta feel it out. What about you? Hold it! This number of bullets that have you convinced? Only two bullets were fired, and the two guns that fired them have been examined by the police. When the parlor when the parlor maid asked me how many are invited for dinner. I always tell her to count the table setting. Wait, what? To, I always tell her to count the table settings. Okay, yeah. Well, that logic is, that's logical, I suppose. Although, yes. Sometimes after dining, the crockery does go missing. One or two guests rather like the fine china. Does your employer dine with thieves? So I suppose. There was another bullet somewhere of which we were unaware of. I have to reconsider my position. A third bullet somewhere on the scene. Could that be possible? Hmm. I don't think I can prove it. They said the bullet went through. They said the bullet went through homes. Did that really? Did it really go through him though? I feel like the bullet would be lodged in him. Eh, I'm not gonna. Say, I'm not gonna say it's impossible, but you know. I don't have any information for it right now. Fortunately, only two bullets were discovered by the police during the investigation. Yes, I know. Right. And I don't imagine the good men of Scotland Yard would have overlooked anything. That's a lie. 
if I missed a bullet while I was cleaning his lordship's office, well... I should receive a sound scolding, I doubt. And he should receive a visit from the police, perhaps. It sounds like a crime scene to me. Hmm, a third bullet. Completely turn things around if there was one, wouldn't it? Don't you think we might be lying, uh, might find one lying around somewhere? Maybe. Hmm. Actually, what? Court records. Let's check this real quick. I need. Hmm. Gina, can you spray this with your weird blood kit thing? Look, this is blood. Yes, you're right. It's a small smear, but definitely blood. Actually, I feel as though I might have noticed that before. Huh, it's time to shine again. Oh yeah, you are going to spread. Thank you. Exactly what I need you to do. Can we get this done quickly, Iris? In a flash. Spray it, girl. What we got? Green. What? Lovely bright shade again. Okay, wait. That color. What is it? It's just the green, is it? So that bullet... Okay. So the bullet has to be inside Holmes, right? No, I'm not crazy. Because the green is someone's blood that we don't know. Because we know Mr. Thrice's blood, and we know uh, Mr. Winniebank's blood. But the green is an unknown one, so someone got shot, right? Hmm. Not the first time we've seen that color, is it? Okay. And this just says four minutes to the guild on the back. I don't think this really adds anything. Four minute guild it. That's the man you defended in court a couple of months ago, isn't it, Reno? Yes. Or rather, mistakenly defended. I wonder what his name's doing on the back of this disc. That's a question I love to know the answer to myself. Okay. So we got that now. And our little blood portfolio. So, this belongs to the same person. And we know it's not Holmes. I would assume, I would assume, uh, you know, that Iris would know what blood would belong to Holmes, alright? Hmm. Pawn brokery ticket. And this is where we have, uh, Thrice Fired's blood. No, this is Thrice Fired's blood. Okay. Well, we gotta find a third bullet, a third bullet somehow, so... Maybe we can get a picture from you. So if I understood correctly, you need two pictures. Left eye, slightly different right one, and the right eye. Exactly. You see the scene in three dimensions. Like this. So. Uh, if we had two bullets, I don't suppose you can see anything useful with them? Hmm, I think you'll find... That no matter how much you squint, the truth of the situation always looks the same here. The only person who could have shot the victim is the girl in the dock. How can you be so sure of that? Think about it. The Skulkin brothers shot the great detective, didn't they? Yes. That's been mentioned once or twice. Well then, surely it's coming into focus now, isn't it? This is a waste of time. I'm not going to change this man's mind anytime soon. You, tell me. Was there a bullet in that man? Would you please stop muttering about things that have nothing to do with the trial, sir? The defendant's life is on the line here. Hmm? Well, the thing is... I couldn't really say that it's nothing to do with the trial, to be honest. Huh? I mean, there's no question that the man was shot, but the bullet had simply vanished from his stomach. It's quite an... Inex it's right and oh, fuck, inexplicable, don't you think? Hmm. I almost don't want to ask, but this surgery you've been muttering about all this time, you were operating on... What was the fellow's name now? Uh, Herlich? No. Herlock? No. Herlock? Herlock Shlums? 
by any chance? Ah, oh, yes, good lord. It was the herlock. It was it was the hairlock fellow. Did he shit the bullet out? No. I'm. Hmm. I like. See, I. Fuck. <laughs> I, I think what he's saying is that from his operation, he's like, I don't think a bullet would just simply disappear, right? Um, so maybe, I, I honestly don't know what he's talking about. I'm, if I'm going to assume here, I'm going to assume that he tucked the bullet out, probably put it somewhere on like a Petri dish or something like that, and then went back to get the bullet and it was gone. And if that's the case, then Herlock Shloms probably has the bullet on him, like he has a you know, he has in, like, a bottle or something. I don't fucking know. He's a weirdo. <laughs> like, Herlock stole the bullet. That's what I'm saying. And all I want to know, because they're saying that the bullet went through Herlock, which I don't, like, like, uh, like you know, right? That's, that's some real bad news right there. Like, he would have been way more fucked up than what he seemed if the bullet went straight through him, right? And on top of that, the blood that we checked out I would assume that Iris would know what blood Herlock's would, you know, she would know Herlock's blood on sight, right? Because she's a weirdo. <laughs> but, like, we don't know whose blood it is. And I'm saying that that bullet, I'm saying the, what I'm thinking is that the bullet in the calendar belongs to Wendy Banks. There's a third party somewhere that shot Wendy Banks. And that the bullet that the two thieves shot is the one that went to, you know, Herlock. So. you the surgeon that operated on Mr. Slums? That's right. Using the very latest anesthesia technique, I might add. It was fairly major op, I can tell you. This is crazy. Let me see. The fellow was brought in not long after midnight, if I remember correctly. They said he'd been shot by some criminal or other, so I opened him up. Like a, wait, so I opened him up like a shot. What the f <laughs> Okay, yeah. But the funny thing is, I went over his insides with a fine-tooth comb and couldn't find the bullet anywhere. Okay. Hmm. That is a conundrum. And I'm gonna assume that there was no exit wound on his body. So... Herlock is a weird dude. I don't want to say he might have taken the bullet out himself, but something might have happened. Either that or it wasn't a bullet or something. I don't fucking know. So I'm afraid I had to throw up my hands and just stitch the fellow back up. Either that or since he's an old ass man, his eyesight is dog shit and the bullet is still inside of him. I hate to state the obvious, but... Yes? Surely that's because the bullet is still at the scene of the shooting. The counsel for the defense is correct. It is clearly shown that the photographic print, the bullet that the, uh, that the Skulkin Brothers fired at Mr. Slums, hit him in the stomach region. Then exited his body and launched it into the shot. Yeah, but... I find it hard to believe that the bullet just went straight through him like that. You know? Hmm. I find it so hard to believe, right? Then, ex then exit his body launch, uh, launched into the shop wall where the calendar is hanging on by the door. I think you'll find it's really quite simple if you just consider the problem three-dimensionally. Huh. Who do you think I am, son? Hmm? Well, jury number four is about the best I can do. As soon as I saw the wound in the man's stomach, I flipped him over. There's no exit wound, right? Like a pancake. Are you saying that you checked his back? Of course I did. And there wasn't a trace of injury. No sign of bullet. Thank you. Thank you! <laughs> like... Like, that man would be so fucked up if it went straight through him. That's, like, it's less damage for a bullet to be stuck in your body than to go all the way through. Right? What? That's the point. The only logical conclusion was that the bullet was still somewhere in the man's innards. Which is exactly why I said about slicing why I said about slicing him up. And I'm still none the wiser even now. How many times do I have to say it? 
Can somebody please explain how it happened? Can somebody please solve the mystery? It's almost as much as a mystery as uh, as how the jury, jury got put together. Mystery of where the bullet ended up. Alrighty then. I really wouldn't. Can you consider that like pitting that against them? Because I mean, he's kind of helping them, right? But I'm gonna save it because I have one mistake left, and if I fuck it up, they're gonna be like, they're gonna have like a whole entire scene just to tell me I got a game over, and that takes forever. Tell me about bullets, man. Those two statements clearly contradict the idea. Uh, the idea that all I well, I'm sorry. The idea that all I do is pit jurors against each other. Okay, yeah, okay. See, that's where I'm getting at now. Oh, a ballistics expert. Pitting, pitting. On the night in question, Mr. Sloans was shot by one of the. I keep wanting to say sunk. Fuck it. I'll just. Gonna, I'm just gonna call them Sunken Brothers now. The Sunken Brothers. But since there was no sign of an exit wound on his back, we must assume the bullet didn't pass through him. However, no bullet was found lodged in Mr. Sloan's body either. Furthermore, a bullet was found lodged in the wall of the shop where Mr. Sloan was shot. Juror number six. Hello, my name is Valen. Pleased to meet you. Valen, Valen, Valen. This apparent contradiction is the fact that is so clearly troubling juror number four. Are you able to explain the mystery? Hmm. I have been in a very similar situation in Motherland. It was night, there was blizzard, I was running away along mountain road in freezing, clo in freezing cold. Golly! The snow was piling high on both sides of road. It was very narrow and dangerous. My pursuers had hunting rifles and they were on dog sleds. Metal note. <laughs> Mental note. Don't ask too many questions. I was shot from behind and fell down in snow. And this situation was very similar to what I hear today from Doctor. They could not be they could not find bullet to my body. No sign of how do you say exit wound. Then where'd the bullet go? Bullet never hit me. Well, it never hit you. When did you fall down? Bullet hit frozen wall of ice very close to my side. The impact knocked him over? What? Small piece, very sharp, broke away from lump of ice and pierced my body. It made deep wound that looked like bullet wound. Good gracious. Of course, piece of ice quickly melted inside me. And then his situation to mystery of disappearing bullet. All right, so Holmes definitely had something probably in his pocket and it probably lodged itself there, but the impact left a mark, right? So he probably has like a book or something with like a bullet in it. <laughs> but well, that doesn't answer the question at all. Hmm? The shooting happened in the pawnbroker's shop. Not some snowy mountain road in another country. I mean, there's a bunch of crazy shit that can break there. Just an idea, but we might not be looking at exactly the same scenario here. Bruno? Where exactly was Hurley shot again? Uh, well, according to the report, in his stomach. Sort of around this area, I think. Well, that's precisely where he wears all those little pa uh, where those little pouches on his belt. A pouch? Actually, I might have noticed something like that. Yes, a pouch. If he were, uh, it were to keep his <clears throat> his three glass vials of very dangerous chemicals that he used in his investigations. What? Really? Doctor, where is this pouch Mr. Sloan is wearing? Um, well. The fellow had nothing like that on his person when he arrived at the hospital, as far as I remember. So he fucking kept it. <laughs> like I said, he's a fucking weirdo. He said, the bullet's mine. My bullet, I love bullet. 
<laughs> if I may. Lord Von Zykes. While I really while I realize it is forbidden for the prosecution to interject during some nation examination, I should inform the defendant that I have the pouch in question in the antechamber outside the courtroom. God damn it. Sorry. As I understand it, when the police arrived on the scene and found Mr. Slums injured, they removed the pouch in order to assess the wound. Thank goodness. I thought I was getting forgetful for a moment. Since then, it has been in my safekeeping along with all the other evidence related to the case. I can personally vouch for the fact that it has not been touched since the incident occurred. Very well. While extremely unconventional during the summation examination, I must demand the prosecution present the item in question with all speed. Bring forth Mr. Herlock Shalom's pouch. Hmm, I see. So, this is the pouch worn by Sherlock, by Mr. Sh like, by Sherlock, by Mr. Shlomes on the night in question, is it? Look at that. When the files is broken, and the leather around it is scorched black, it's almost as if the file exploded. Exploded. So, that night, the bullet from the Sulkin Brothers' gun struck Mr. Shlomes' pouch. And it was the glass file exploding that caused the fellow's injury. This bullet did not penetrate victim, but was deflected into wall of shop. All right, so we're getting at where I was at. Hmm. A delightfully complex aroma. Well, it would appear one mystery has been solved at least. Though it has no bearing on the truth of this case. Uh, the the bungling and. Got it. The bungling and burgling brothers shot the detective, and the accused shot the pawnbroker. I'm sorry, I had like a moment here. I don't, I don't even fucking... I don't, I don't even know where my train of thought went. <laughs> I like lost all all meaning of life for a moment. Uh, the pertinent fa the per Fuck. The pertinent facts of the case remains unaltered. Hmm. But, at least the mystery is solved. I can sleep easy tonight. Thank you, young man. Ah, thank you very much. Glad I could help. Due to its bearing of the conundrum just solved, the court will sequester this, this scruffy pouch as evidence. Hurley's pouch isn't scruffy. Okay, I entered the court records. Now, the summation examination. It would appear that defense is somewhat struggling to alter opinion, hmm? Please, my lord, a little more time. After all, that's a new piece of evidence. It'll be a valuable clue. Okay. There's still a way to turn this around somehow, I'm sure of it. The accused attempted theft of the previous day. All right, well, that was a lot of words. Just a fucking... Get the files in there, you know? Take a quick look-see. That's a lot of fucking evidence. Okay. Damn it, I pressed the wrong button. Alright, let's see. Really scorched badly here, huh? Oh, strap's broken, look. Must be where the bullet hit, then. Let's see. Ha-ha! Huzzah! The bullet! What the? Iris, look! That's why I said I find it hard for that bullet to just go straight through someone like that. What a stroke of luck. Get his pouch. This is an amazing discovery. What this means is... There were three bullets fired at Winnie Banks that night. Found exactly what the jury was talking about. The third bullet. It's time to press the juror again. <laughs> Read it and weep, bitch. Look what I got. Hold it! It's the number of bullets that had you convinced. Only two bullets were fired. Uh huh. 
Well, that's logical. Except there were three! Oh, come on, just get to the fucking point already. There was another bullet. I have to reconsider my position. A third bullet somewhere on the scene. Could that be possible? It is possible! I can prove it! Allow me to show you, then, the third bullet. Dun 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 dun! Here it is! We discovered it just now. Yes, on the night in question in Wendy Banks' pawn burglary, another bullet was fired. Hold it. What is this new trickery, you Nipponese conjurer? Where did you find that bullet? It was lodged inside Mr. Slum's pouch. What? This pouch was removed from Mr. Slum's waist before he was taken to the hospital, and you said yourself that it has not been touched. And since then, it has been touched by no one. Do, do you mean to say? The shot fired by Sulkin Brothers that night. Yes. As your lordship has summarized, it hit his pouch. But that makes no sense whatsoever. You already know the whereabouts of his bullet fired at Mr. Sloan's. Clearly visible in the photographic print. Uh, two guns from the same scene have been... <coughs> Jesus. Two guns have been uh, from the same scene have been submitted into the courtroom records as evidence. Yes, that of Mr. Winnie Banks and that belonging to the Sulkin brothers. An examination of both guns revealed that only one single bullet had been fired from each. But, but that means... That's right. We now know that on the night in question, three bullets were fired. However, only two bullets were fired from the guns recovered from the scene of the crime. And until the incontri- oh god. Incontrievable. Inconsistent- god, inconsistency. In, in, incontrievable. Incontrivable. Am I saying that right? Yeah, incontrivable. Inconsistency is somehow explained. We cannot and must not pass judgment. <laughs> I love how Von Zyx is just like, Ugh, You wound me! While this summation examination remains incomplete, the court has been presented with new facts. Facts that would appear to shake the very foundations upon which this case against the defendant has been built. As is my, uh, per uh, God, uh, prerogative, that's the word, right? Yeah, prerogative in this situation. I hereby temporarily suspend the Subnation Examination. By Jupiter. What? Bailiff, bring the witness back to the stand at once. Ah, look at these guys. Witness? Governor? Were you listening to the proceedings while the defense carried out the summation examination? We was, Governor, we was. Perhaps we can dispense with the tragedious preamble. Tra tragedious, why did I say that? What tragedious? That's not even a fucking word. <laughs> with the tedious tramble. Uh, tramble. With the tedious preamble. Thank you. Simply answer this one question. A third bullet has been identified at the scene of the crime. What do you make of that? Make of gov? Uh, I don't make nothing of. It is one of yours. I don't even know what the fuck. Gor gorbli gorblimey? Gorb what the fuck? <laughs> Not a chance. In that case, did you have an accomplice? What? what? Never. The Skulkin brother, uh, the Skulkin bruvs work alone. It's just the two of us. That's our trademark. How soon we forget poor Skulky. <laughs> Only two of the bullets from the crime scene originated from the firearms we have in evidence. The third bullet was fired from another gun. Where is it? Oh, Lumi. This ain't a... It's a head scratcher. Hmm. Counsel for the defense? Yes? I should like to hear your thoughts regarding these new developments. 
the third bullet and the mysterious missing firearm from whence it came. He's gonna give me one chance, and one chance is all I got. <laughs> Jesus. Came from a third party. Thinking back over all the testimonies we've heard and all the evidence we've seen, I think I'm starting to form a picture. A picture of what really happened that night. My lord, I think it's clear that the third bullet tells us about the Skulkin brothers. They had an accomplice. On that night at Wendy Banks Pawnbrokery, the brothers must have been working with a third man. Um. The witness are clearly doing their best to cover up the existence of the accomplice. But the evidence all points to the fact that there was someone else present. Someone carrying a gun. Objection! I'm talking about the man with the plan that got the gun in his hand, you know what I mean? <laughs> An accomplice, you say? Pig will. A pig's will. What the hell? Pig's will, my bad. Pig's will. These protracted proceedings have already forced us to endure two summonation examinations. Eh, actually, one was one was one was postponed, or uh, you, you know what I mean. He ended it early, so the second one shouldn't count. Yet in all that time, there's not been a murmur of a third man. If this is apparently, uh, if this apparently wraith-like being exists. The court must be shown hard evidence. Without it, the fantasy will be crushed. Oh, I got your evidence. Don't worry, I got this. Prosecution demands answer to two counts. Firstly, proof, evidence. This is what accomp uh, uh, that this accomplice was ever at the scene of the crime. And secondly, a motive? The identity of the, oh shit. That second one I can't help you with. That second one, I cannot help you with. Hmm. That second one, I don't think I can help you with. Damn it. First one, no doubt. Second one, ugh. The Skulkins are lying, I know that. But, how can I ascertain the identity of the person they're hiding? Well, counsel, I mean, unless they're willing to do some sort of blood analysis and find out, I'm supposed to prove the existence of the accomplice? And reveal the person's identity, even? In response to the prosecution demands, my lord, the defense is... I don't think I can... <clears throat> I'm ready to present. Defense is ready. I believe I can prove all the answers that the prosecution demands. So, my Nipponese friend, despite the swimming eyes, you seem to think you have something to say. This promise to be in this promises to be interesting. Well, I gotta do it, you know. I have to push forward now. There's no other option. I need to use every single piece of evidence available to me that will make a difference. In that case, counsel, I would ask you to present the evidence without delay. On the night in question, in the moments leading up to the death of the victim. Alright, let me just double save here. What proof was there a third person present at the scene of the crime? Proof is this. I think. It should be. It's the only proof I got. Take that! The evidence is right here, in this portfolio. By Joe, the portfolio again, is it? Do you expect the court to rifle through your papers itself? Be more specific. You claim one of those blood samples proved the presence of a third intruder? Well, which one is it? It's this one, the green one. Take that! What am I looking at here? There appears to be some sort of green paint or such like around the bullet hole in the middle of the calendar. That's a blood stain, my lord. A blood stain? Green blood? Curious, even for you. Well, someone hasn't watched Aliens, dickhead. <laughs> is the court to understand that the intruder was some unhuman creature? Okay, someone has watched aliens. Okay, I take that back. 
something developed by Herlock Schwams. By the great detective? New invention. Stop. Not yet not yet appeared in story. Stop. Spoilers. It's this you see. It does have an it doesn't have a name yet. This foggy spray, a chemical that reacts with the different elements in people's bloods to change color. Different elements in people's blood. Yes. Everyone's blood is slightly different, you see? Because it's made up of different elements. So by seeing what color it changes, you can tell you can tell in a flash whose blood it is. There's only one problem with, with that invention, Iris, is that the amount of changes in blood probably can't be the same as the amount of colors that we have. Right now, it seems that you only have like four primary colors to work with. I mean, there's only four primary colors, but it seems like you can only work with the primaries. So if you have any more, if you have five or more, you're kind of fucked. <laughs> you're kind of fucked a little bit. We already used every color of the rainbow. Uh, what color is this guy's blood? I don't know, macaroni? <laughs> so by seeing what the color changes... <laughs> macaroni? What the fuck is this, Crayola colors? Oh, that brings a whole <laughs> brings a whole extra dimension to, uh, to looking at blood. Talk of blood in courtroom. Stop. Very exciting. What? What? I think, I think this lady needs to take the stand. Well, not take the stand. I think she needs to be in the... She's freaking me out. As, as an example, this one shows blood of the victim, Mr. Winniebanks. His blood is blue because he's a good guy. See, this blood is green because we don't know what it is. And the other guy's blood is purple because he's dead. <laughs> yes. So you see the green color and blood stain on this calendar. Shows that somebody else was shot in the... Uh, in the main part of the shop. Now, hold fire there, young man. Uh, could be, uh, could be from some unrelated incident, could it? Unrelated incident with the fucking gun, dude? Come on. No, it's not unrelated. Hmm? The date shown on the calendar is the date in which Mr. Wendy Banks was killed. By golly. Therefore, we can assume that whoever was shot was shot on the same day. Then whose blood is it? Well, the Skulgan brothers in the stand don't appear to be suffering from any gunshot injuries. I mean, I can't, again, I can't, I can't, I don't, I don't know who it is. All I can think is that the only other person I have in my court records is Egbert. Which means it must be the blood of somebody else, the third intruder in fact. Objection! Whose identity the court is still waiting to hear. You can't delay this any longer, my learned friend. Who's the alleged? Well, alleged. So, I mean, this is literally the only other person I can use right now. Right? Take that! The man's name is Egbert Benedict. Egbert Benedict? Who on earth are you talking about, counsel? He paid a visit to Wendy Banks Pawnbrokery the afternoon before the incident took place. When the accursed, uh, when the accused attempt, fuck, when the accused attempted to deceive the pawnbroker into releasing this article into her possession. That's right. Hmm. The man identified by the defense, Mr. Egbert Benedict, then attempted to take the article from the defendant by force. Oh, damn, you know what? I, I kind of overlooked that, too. Because <laughs> in my mind, I'm like, I have nothing to tie him to it. But yeah, his blood's on the fucking desk, so, you know. And that was the only other person who came in contact with it. Unless it's McGilded's blood. Which, I highly doubt that it will be because he's fucking dead. <laughs> Broker. Uh, yes, sir. I believe this filthy pig, uh, pocket thief just redeemed an article from you? No? Yes? The article in question belongs to me. I demand it f uh, for it to be- I demand for it to be returned at once. Now that's a lie. What are you trying to pull? Give me back my overcoat, you wartzel. Needless to say... 
check out this cool JoJo pose. Whose pose is that? Is that Speedwagon's pose? Am I bugging out? That might be Speedwagon. It has to be Speedwagon, right? <laughs> Whose pose is that? That's someone's pose. Uh, any music box disc too. Inspector Gregson was there at the time and can attest to what happened. In the end, it was the inspector himself who took the disc. Can you collaborate this account, Inspector? Um, yes, my lord. The more or less, that's more or less of what happened. And in the, and in the inserts of being thorough, I asked Winnie Banks for the print showing the fellow. Taken from on his red, red, ah, uh, fuck, on his red hand, fuck, on his red handed recorder. Yes. Uh, that's him talking to Mr. Winnie Bank that morning. And you claim this man is the brother's accomplice. Well, Mr. and Mr. Sulkin? Skulkin? Never seen the geezer before in my life. Whenever I hear the term geezer, all I can think is that fucking show on Netflix, what is it called, Love Island or some shit? Where, like, everyone on there, I guess, is, like, either, I don't know, they're either British or Australian or some shit. But, like, whenever they talk, they're like, he's a right geezer, isn't he? I like geezers. And I'm like, God, what the fuck is it? What does that mean? <laughs> right? Oh, boy, 5 a.m. Yeah, I know, right? It's fucking, like, 6 to 7 a.m. for me right now. Uh, on me life, Gov. On me life. Never seen him. But plot. I know, right? I'm waiting for it to say to be continued. Can you tell in my voice that, like, I'm starting to feel it? Well, I've been feeling it probably like 30 minutes ago. Well, somewhat unsurprising, it appears our witnesses disagree with assertion. I'm sure your lordship recalls my learned Nipponese friend, actually, uh, actual assertion, which was that he could prove the identity of the alleged accomplice. Yes, and I can. Then show us the evidence. I agree. You must see proof that. The you must see proof that the clean-cut gentleman in the photograph is a filthy criminal, as you say. Okay, calm down, juror number two. I know you're out here with the fucking... Like, we need a fucking wet floor sign for you, but settle down. She's like, hmm, he's a bad guy, but he looks so clean. <laughs> this is the last piece of evidence. I've had a feeling that something like this been missing in the trial from the very start. But now, I'm going to drag it kicking and screaming into the courtroom. Are you ready to present your answer to the court then, counsel? Yes, my lord. The defense will present the evidence now. Proof that... It's not going to tell me to choose something. Okay, I thought it was going to tell me to choose something in the picture. I was like, don't, don't do this. Jura 2 is boo like your skull. <laughs> Aww. It's the music that... Well, do I have anything? Oh, I guess it would be in my portfolio then, yeah? In my portfolio. The portfolio right here. In this portfolio. Oh, the portfolio right here. The proof right here in this portfolio. Good gracious, counsel. Does that portfolio contain the answers to every question posed? I see you share my interest in... Clar in Claret? Claret? Is that the word? I've never seen that word day in my life. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, clary colored liquids, my Nipponese friend, but... Enough. The court demands to see further evidence. Which blood sample proves the man you identified was the one shot by the third bullet at the scene of the crime? Take that! As I mentioned before, on, this af on the afternoon of the day in question, the defendant attempted, uh, uh, deceitfully, atten fuck, deceitfully, admittedly, big words, to reclaim the disc from Winnie Banks, which is when the aforementioned Egbert Benedict appeared on the scene, I believe. This man then attempted to purloin the article from the defendant's possession, no? That's right, my lord. I myself was present at the time. It was following this that the minor incident occurred.
but of course but of course sir here's the disc for you very well then I shall bid you a farewell say goodbye to style wait a minute that disc it's mine what what do you think you're doing you little tramp you've you've drawn blood you filled the animal Being a music box disc, it has countless small but sharp metal protrusions over its surface. Those protrusions cause Mr. Benedict's finger to bleed, and the resulting smear of blood is still visible on the disc now. I bit my tongue saying that. Goodness, a blood stain, is it? My, ass my assistant and I have just an. So she's my assistant now, okay. My assistant and I have just analyzed the blood stain here in this very courtroom using my trusty fogger gun. Yes. And we added the results to the portfolio. I say. It's green. It's exactly the same color as the blood around the calendar. The evidence is conclusive. The man calling himself Mr. Egbert Benedict, who was in Windy Banks, or as I like to call him, Mr. Chad Wellington. Mmm, yes, Chad Wellington. Speaking of Chad Wellington, if you have BTTV, you get to use a nice little animated emote of Chad Wellington. Yes, mmm. <laughs> That's my guy, Sir Chad. Is the accomplice who was presented at the scene of the crime that night. So, there's someone... I, I couldn't even fucking read it in time. I'm gonna take a sip of my water now. All right, my lord, it is, in a, it is the opinion of the defense that Mr. Egbert Benedict should be summoned to the courtroom to testify. Hmm. It would certainly seem that we can that we can ill afford to ignore this gentleman's apparent pres, uh, apparent damn it, apparent presence. Objection! This has gone on long enough now. This fraudulent ignorance of the of the fuck of the mechanics of law. Herlock Schloms, you say? Yes, I've heard the name. The protagonist in a series of short stories for a vulgar, for the vulgar classes. Fucking damn it! <laughs> a god of, a god of detection, or some such. He's gonna play the fucking card. He's gonna play it. And now you employ chemical substance devised by this fantastical persona in the highest court in the land. Do you expect us to take you seriously? The samples made by the play by the plaything are not fit be, to be called evidence. Hmm. So the blood stain turned a shade of green. What of it? Here's to you successfully proving that no other blood in the world has turned the same color. Uh well. And pray. Do you not even think of suggesting that we would take Mr. Shlom's words for it? <laughs> he is right, Mr. Shlom's. <laughs> I mean, I was waiting for someone to just go like, my guy, you're saying fucking Herlock Shlom's this, Herlock Shlom's that. He's not legally employed by us. Why the fuck do we care? <laughs> right? I was waiting for someone to say that. I knew it would come to this. Of course, Mr. Slum's investment isn't going to be recognized by any official body, but what other choice do I have? Hmm. I'm just remembering what Father Christmas over there said before. About he was temporarily suspending the summonation examination? Huh? In other words, the examination isn't over yet, is it? G good grief. What did you say, young girl? And in the summation examination, the decision as to whether or not the trial continues is in the hands of the six jurors, isn't it? 
So, the way I see it, it doesn't matter what certain other people think of Herlock of Hurley's inventions. At least, not for now. Yeah, she's right. Young lady, you have quite a devious mind. It really just comes down to one thing. Whether these ladies and gentlemen of the jury are convinced by what you say, Runel. Is that about right, would you say? Or did I misunderstand something? Unbelievable. Mr. Sloan's partner is a force to be reckoned with. Iris Wilson, sharpshooter. After that shrewd, after that shrewd person, <laughs> uh, a precess of, of situation from an entirely unexpected source, it must be acknowledged that the previous summonation examination has yet to reach its conclusion. This is absurd. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the court now looks for you and your final leanings in the matter. As proud citizens of Her Majesty Britain, I am sure you will, uh, I'm sure you will come to a fair and just conclusion. So then, state your financial your financial? Why did I say that? What the fuck? <laughs> you can tell that I'm losing my mind. I'm beginning to sunset. I've been started sunsetting like an hour ago. So then, stating your final decision in turn, please. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Guilty. What the f Guilty. Oh no. Not guilty. Yeah. Please just give us to be continued. I know, right? Two call guilty and four call not guilty. Such is the outcome of the summation examination, so we continue the trial. Objection! What do you mean low battery? Go fuck yourself. My lord, with all due respect, this is an outrage. The prosecution refuses to accept this decision. Well then walk the fuck out the court and let me win. I don't care. On what grounds? These jurors are persuaded by some half-baked uh, concoction devised by a pretender to real police work. Then they are too ignorant to be trusted with the judgment of anyone's guilt. I'm sorry, Lord Von Zax, but the outcome of the summation examination cannot be ignored. This trial will continue. <laughs> Jesus. To be continued, to be continued, to be continued, please. Nevertheless, we find ourselves in a rather awkward situation. The defense has very reasonable request to subpoena of a new witness. But sadly, I fear that that will be impossible. Because they never fucking caught the guy. What? The name the gentleman gave for himself, Edward Benedict, is quite clearly false. Yeah, because we all know his real name is Chad Wellington, duh. <laughs> I don't believe it. Just when I managed to prove the man was was there that night. I want to stand Von Zykes in his pretty little <laughs> in his pretty little face? Oh man. Could could I say something? Who was that, please? Who spoke? It was me, my lord. Juror number five. What have you say? What do you have? Fuck. What do you have to say, madam? If possible, Inspector. Oh, Inspector. Yes, ma'am. I wonder if you might show. I wonder if you might show the photographic print to me again, the one in which the gentleman is shown. What's she gonna do? Send out a fucking. Send out a uh. What is it? What is it called when they send out like a hunt for a dude? What is it like a RSP or some bullshit? You know what I mean? She's gonna use that telegraph. All right. Yes, this one you mean. I mean, she can't really use a telegraph. I mean, can't send a photo. Okay, whatever. Hmm, yes. There's no doubt in my mind. Juror number five? You don't mean to say. You know this man. Yes, I know him. What? No. Good gracious. Order! Order in my court, damn it! Juror number five! How the fuck? 
I'm in communications officer. Stop. As we can clearly see. The gentleman in the photograph is... Stop. Also a communication officer. Stop. He works in my office. Stop. A very talented operator, in fact. Stop. He should be in communication station now. Stop. Tapping away on the telegraph. Stop. This doesn't seem right somehow. I can't put my fingers on why, but it doesn't feel right. This all feels set the fuck up. It's too much of a coincidence that these fucking... That the jurors have... They're too tied to the case. Hmm. I suppose we all imagine the accomplice would have some sort of hardened... Would be some sort of hardened criminal. It's a bit unexpected to find that he's just a respectable job by the day. Whatever he gets up into at night. Yes, I suppose that is. I suppose that's why I felt something was wrong. If the gentleman is at London's communication station... We should be able to subpoena him within the hour. Lord Von Zykes, if you please. Yes, my lord. Make the necessary arrangements with all haste. As your lordship bids. The court will recess for one hour to be continued, to be continued, to be continued. When the new witness arrives, we shall reconvene here the gen uh, to hear the gentleman's testimony. To be continued, to be continued, to be continued, to be continued. Inspector Gregson. Yes, my lord. I should like to hear from your from you full. Uh, fuck. <coughs> I would like to hear from your, uh, from your. I can't even fucking say the word. Specifically about events at the pawnbrokery on the day in question. Come to my chamber. Oh, Inspector, come to my chambers. Yes, sir, my lord. Very well. Court is adjourned until 1:40 p.m. When did the game say say that we started this trial? I hope this game's not trying to tell me that this trial took only 40 minutes, because that's a fucking lie. <laughs> yes! Where's that fucking clip of M. Bison when you need him going, yes! Oh, save your progress, yes. My controller's gonna die. All right. <clears throat> That's going to be the end of the stream for tonight or this morning or whatever the hell. My controller's dying. My ass hurts because I've been sitting in his seat all day. And I'm hungry. So I'm going to eat something. But before I leave, first of all, for those who came and watched the, the, uh, the, uh, I can't even fucking think anymore. For those who came and watched the stream live, thank you very much. If you like what you see, please follow. For those who are watching the VODs, thank you very much. If you really like what you see and you want to support me, you can click the sub button if you want to do that. If you have a Twitch Prime or Prime or Amazon Prime or whatever, you get a free sub. You can hand that to whoever the hell you feel like. That's cool, right? Um, currently on YouTube, I'm continuing the Pokemon Marathon. So right now, Hey You Pikachu is going up. That's the play. That's the playthrough that's going up. The Persona, uh, the Persona Four. Uh, streams are getting uploaded. Also, the Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart streams have been uploaded, and the Simulacrum stuff has been uploaded. Cool. If you want to follow me on Twitter, it's right there on the screen. If you ever want to send fan art or some bullshit, you can at me on Twitter about it, or just DM me personally on Twitter, whatever, it doesn't matter. I think that's everything I want to say. Get off my chest. Uh, what else is there? Is there anything else to say? Oh, next time we stream. That's in the schedule. But that's going to be not tonight, but the next night on the schedule. So if you're on the East Coast or whatever of America, that would be two, maybe like 12 to 2 a.m. That's when it starts. If you're on the West Coast or whatever um, on in America, that, that's like three hours before some bullshit. I don't fucking know, dude. Whatever. It's on the schedule. You can check it out. And that's pretty much it's about everything. If I ever do any streams in between those times, it will, you know, it will either, you know, either be a secret stream. And I won't tell nobody. So you don't tell nobody about that. You just come and check it out. Or I will put it up on Twitter and be like, yo, I'm streaming right now. I got like an hour or two or something like that. That's pretty much it. That's everything I got to say. Holy fuck. Wow. I'm tired. <laughs> so that's everything. As always. I want to say thank you guys. I just hit my microphone. I want to say thank you guys for watching. And I will see you 
in the next video. Stay happy, stay healthy, and take care. Oh, and before I forget, thanks again, Sushi, for the, uh, for the rate. Greatly appreciate it. Okay, stay happy, stay healthy, and take care. Chef Chateau, what else should I be? Please don't take off.